so if we have a look at the uh, the Radeon with Vega, the V the VII launched. The world's first seven nanometers is stupid. Someone's already made a video on how it's a waste of time. Already made a video on how I can play Division 2 at 4K. There's mixed bag. Lisa Sue there, the uh, not the developer, the CEO, talking about stop with these adverts. Stop. Um, clock rate of 1.8 gigahertz, 16 gigabytes of HPM2 memory, bandwidth of one terabyte a second. No. So we're looking at the running at 4K and on max settings gamers that can expect a 35% jump in Battlefield V at 25% in Fortnite and a 42% jump in Strange Brigade and uh, you know they had a demo as well with Devil May Cry 5 running at 4k this here this this GPU is important the reason it's important and I think the reason why Nvidia the Nvidia CEO was not impressed with it thought it was disappointing or it was wasn't worth really paying attention to what was it is uh, his reaction to it. Here you go. Nvidia disses the Radeon 7, bowing the, or the Vega 2, bowing the RTX 2080 will crush AMD's underwhelming GPU. He's doing that for investors. He's doing that for investors. He, he needs to make sure that other investors feel safe, especially after Nvidia's stock. We go back five days, six months. It's not been great. So it's not been great from video. They are at 286 in October. We've gone down to 143. A look at AMD stock. So let's have a look at AMD stock, eh? So I take back what I said. Maybe Nvidia. No, maybe AMD has been doing well either. But you can see there's been a recent spike. You can see that they had a massive period of growth here because I think a lot of what AMD were doing was an AMD basically. People were worried about the people leaving the firm. Um, especially stuff like this here, I think that's where one of the members left, one of the Radeon members, but here, here's the thing right now, um, you've got a situation where AMD are on the rise and Nvidia have gone down, because Nvidia don't have a lot to show at the moment, so when you, you know, when you have, um, when you have CEO Jensen Huang talking about how the 2080 will crush Radeon 2, and the free sync just doesn't work. Here's 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 what's funny about that sentence. Um, you look at free sync, and then Nvidia, Nvidia admits defeat will support G sync on free sync displays. So I don't understand this. Why are they saying that they admit defeat, or that they will support adaptive sync? Why are they announcing it on free sync monitors? If it doesn't, if it if it doesn't work, you know, FreeSync doesn't work is a pretty strong statement for someone to make when they're going to support G-Sync on FreeSync displays. He said there was something like 480 FreeSync monitors and about 70 G-Sync, and do you know the reason why there's so many of these FreeSync monitors is actually because due to fast sync and adaptive sync. Well, I know Adaptive Sync is closer to G-Sync and FreeSync, but FastSync especially, FastSync works just fine. Like, I use FastSync for my games, and I don't have any issues with it. I didn't need to use FreeSync to get smooth 120 FPS. I didn't need to use G-Sync for 144 Hertz. I just used FastSync. There's no need for, for NVIDIA to be launching these expensive G-Sync monitors like they have when you could literally just have a very good experience on a free sync monitor. Um, I would say Jensen is a little bit insecure right now. Um, yes, they have made an incredible 2080 Ti card. That's a very powerful card, but they've also priced it at the price of a second-hand vehicle in New Zealand. They've priced it to $2,500 New Zealand. And um, that's very expensive for a graphics card. That's very expensive for a graphics card, which is designed for gamers. I'm not sure which gamers they're talking about. I don't know many gamers that can afford a $2,500 graphics card. It's almost like people, though, were expecting AMD to come through with a cheaper card that was superior to the 2080 with 7 nanometer technology. And I think we need to just talk about the fact that that's kind of stupid. Why would you think 
Now AMD would come through with a cheaper card that could compete with the 2080. Why would you think that they would make a card that was cheaper than the 2080? And the reason I say why would you think that is because just because the rumors were stating that it would and just because you've had cheap 480 and 580 cards doesn't mean that AMD would necessarily release a cheap top tier card. And this card, despite the fact that people were talking about this the 7 card being a complete flop, is actually not so much of a flop. If you think about if you think about what this card actually means, AMD have got a card that they want to pit against the high-end RTX cards. And that's fantastic. It's fantastic that AMD are feeling brave enough to go up against the 2080. Because the thing is, I think there's a lot of entitlement around people's expectations regarding the price for this thing. HBM2 memory is very expensive from what I understand. And I could just be parroting off bullshit. I'm going to say, is HBM2 memory expensive? It's pretty much all of the above. It consists of a silicon die. You have a stack of separate DRAM die sponsored. So, so this is not just one die of of DRAM you have multiple in the same memory so two four or eight DRAM chips as opposed to one for GDR4 or five let's just let's just stop for a minute and think about the fact that with this APM2 RAM and AMD are putting multiple dies that would usually power just one GDR5 RAM chip, DRAM chip. Like, have the people that are talking about price gouging, because I've had a few comments on it, um, have, you, have they actually considered the fact that maybe what's happened is that it is just really expensive to make HBM2 RAM? And then maybe the reason that it's $700 is because of that, and maybe they couldn't have really justified charging more because they were aware of the competition from NVIDIA. So they wanted to compete, so they made it 700 and we've still got people going, Oh, but that's an AMD price gouging. Oh, they're bad people too. I wanted my VRAM for $100. Well, it just doesn't work like that. You know, Lisa Su and Jin Su Huang, these, these two people are the leaders of two different tech companies that are basically trying to figure out how to get the money from your wallet. That's really all they care about. So don't for a moment think that I'm an AMD fanboy. I've never used an AMD graphics card. I have because I have seen I have seen what's happened with the 10 series especially. I bought a 1060 because it was reasonably priced at the time. I bought it before the cryptocurrency um, issues and I did end up buying my 1080 MSI a little bit late into the game, which was a shame because I really didn't want to have to spend a thousand dollars on a 1080 Ti. I mean not a 1080 Ti. I bought a 1080. Um, but I saw the 1080 Ti prices going up to $1,600 and then when they announced the 2080 Ti in the 2080s in uh, September this year in 2018 I was like I need an AMD to come up with something different because the 580, 590 that was released, the fat boy, you know stuff like that that was really you know shown on Gamers Nexus, it didn't interest me. It's not it's not powerful enough. It's, it's not powerful enough. I've got a 1080. I need something that's going to be rival either a 2080 or a 2080 Ti. Those are the two cards. Basically, my 1080 is third in my mind, and then the 2080 or the 1080 Ti are second. 2080 Ti is first. I, I don't really want to buy a 2080 Ti. I don't really want to buy one. To the credit of people wondering why AMD released this card, it, I would question why they released this card with the upcoming 3000 series Ryzen CPUs because it's looking like the, the 8 core variants can compete with a 9900K at stock. And if they can do that, you can be sure that this card is going to bottleneck, it's going to be a GPU bottleneck. So I can understand certain people being like, why would you do this? But you've got to understand, right? If they can do 4K at max settings, like, the fuck do you want from these people? Like, if you think about it, what more do you want past 4K at max? What, what game are you playing where you need to have a better experience than 4K it's 60. Let's just take a moment to breathe here and think, maybe if I'm playing at like 1080p or 1440p and I put the settings down to high, I'll have consistent 144 hertz through that. That's good. 
and it might be equal to what the 2080 can do but that the thing is that if AMD has got a card that can compete with the 2080 that's that's what we want because if you don't have competition in a market and if you have a monopoly that Nvidia has been sitting on for quite a while you have basically a situation where AMD, uh, Nvidia hasn't needed to really push too much and if they have pushed they can charge a ridiculous amount of money for it. He's only saying this because he's like well my R2080 that it, it, cause what they're probably gonna do is I, I sourced the MSI Lightning 2080 Ti's and stuff and Nvidia have been holding on to the uh, the cards they've got some pocket graphics cards that I think they have um loosened the power restrictions on so you'll be able to get higher overclocks with those and better performance so those will be released and then they've got the 1180s coming out as well that are rumored nvidia has been shady as shit about this they have been really shady and shit and i know that the 590 isn't great either like i'm aware that the 590 is just an overclocked 580 again according to gamers nexus as i understand it neither of these companies again are like symbols of virtue and wonderful they don't that they're not there to be good people or good ethical companies and a lot of it is marketing i just i look at this card and i think right there is a card that she is holding it is a competitor to an nvidia card that is a 2080 amd haven't had anything to compete with this in a very long time i think it's worth giving it a chance so i'm going to give this amd card a chance I think the the innovation of the 7 nanometer GPU is something that should be supported because I think that if you it, it I would say it would have better um, I would I would argue that due to the small size of the die it would potentially have better thermals than the the Vega 64 for example which was notorious for overheating I could be wrong I know that the pricing is far more competitive than the Vega 64, although the Vega 64 was a big pull around the cryptocurrency prices, because of course it was. And I'm hoping that AMD, well AMD have learned their lesson, because there was no mention of cryptocurrency at this, at this thing here. You might be skeptical about why AMD are charging for something at the base rate of $700, and that's because even if a company isn't profiting off of a graphics card or one of their operations, it doesn't mean they're not profiting like AMD recently hit Wall Street I think in terms of going public that's important that means that they're making a lot of money that means that they're making money off of not just any GPUs that they're still selling but their CPUs are highly competitive you know if we look at like um, Ryzen sales 2018 new retail data shows AMD CPUs outselling Intel 2 to 1 that's incredible that is fantastic so amd have gone from intel dominating the market 2000, 2016 2017 came up with ryzen people slowly getting used to the concept of what ryzen was you know the gen the first gen ryzen's had a few issues with like ram compatibility and stuff like that but then eventually what's happened is that now nvidia are going to now amd are going toe to toe with an, with intel and like you know they're they're, they're swinging they're blo swinging at each other you know like um intel does this thing where they have a 28 core cpu that they've got on liquid nitrogen getting up to five gigahertz and it's 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 it's, it's crazy stuff and then and you like little jokes we have a thread ripper that can do th 32 cores and 64 threads and now with the new epic processors yeah, the epic Rome 7 nanometer and 64 core CPU performance benchmark leak. It's just phenomenal. It's phenomenal what they've been able to do here. It's fantastic that they have been able to to do what they have done in a few years. They've turned around their CPU operations and it's it's it's, it's fantastic and I look forward to seeing what happens with with this 3000 CPUs and I guess what's going to happen next, AMD is going to have to figure out how to get a GPU that works as well as the CPUs do, because they've already done very well with Intel. Nvidia 
NVIDIA is already giving away little bits like the Defeat will support G-Sync and they've been doing things that are kind of crazy like I, I, the light, MSI Lightning I mentioned before how how it will um, you know maybe have power restrictions loosened a bit so there's higher performance basically to get it away from this for this competitor to make it seem like a far more sensible option but then of course NVIDIA will probably increase the prices for these other cards because of course they fucking will of course they will because otherwise there's cannibalizing their existing cards which don't which do have these restrictions and then you've also got the fact i don't even know what the fuck nvidia is doing at the moment nvidia are panicking man they've got all these different 1060 cards and these 11 six they're talking about this 1160 that that does as well as a 1070 there's like a roof with how much performance we need from these graphics cards. And I think what's beautiful is that I think we're nearly at that roof. I look forward, I really genuinely look forward to seeing what will happen with the seven card. Maybe this video wasn't as coherent as I wanted it to be, but I just wanted to talk about it. I really just wanted to talk about how I felt about this because I will, you know, full disclosure, I don't use an AMD graphics card, but I would if they had the performance. Because after what Nvidia has been doing with his recent business behavior, I don't want Nvidia, I don't want Nvidia to succeed anymore, man. I I don't think they deserve my patronage anymore. I just feel like if I buy an RTX card, it's going to endorse the shitty behavior that they put forward with all the stuff regarding the DLSS and ray tracing that they promised and it just it's been a complete it's been a, it's been a complete mess around i don't trust nvidia to act in the best interest of its consumers and while i am not of the illusion that amd you know its stock dips because people wanted it to be an absolute just destroyer of worlds but it's just the start I'm sure that AMD weren't expecting, that's probably why they had the price as low as it was because they're like, you know, we probably won't make a lot of leeway with this card, but the thing is that even if we won't make a lot of leeway, we can still try and release something to show that we actually give a shit about the gamers that we sell to. I think that that 25% more performance is a good start. Can you imagine if, if AMD were to do something with GDDR6 and they had the mentality that they did with this V7 card or the Vega 2 card? I would, I feel like if AMD were to use GDDR6, if they were to use this and they were to apply the mentality of we need to price it low enough so that we can get into the market and get into the other consumers, I think that would put and that would make Nvidia dance on coals. That would be beautiful. I think we need that. So I am supporting AMD. I will of course be are we waiting for benchmarks? I'm not gonna pre-order the, the I'm not gonna pre-order the Radeon or the Vega 2. Whatever it's called, I won't. I'll wait for benchmarks. It's taken a while for them to come up with a competitor to the 1080 Ti and, and if Nvidia was still telling selling the 1080 Ti, maybe this wouldn't even be this would be a non-event. Because Nvidia aren't selling a 1080 Ti, they've given AMD a platform to compete with their overpriced RTX cards. I just yeah, hopefully AMD do well. I would genuinely buy a card like this if I could. So we'll see how it goes. Thank you very much for watching. Um, feel free to disagree with me. I've started trying to listen to comments that are constructive and uh, trying to listen to criticism. Because um, I used to be a bit of a snowflake. Very fragile, but I've decided to try and listen to people now because I might learn new things. Stay cool, see you later, and uh, yeah, bye bye.